The FCC has issued this time an $18,000 fine to an amateur radio operator for willfully interfering with a repeater. So we're going to look at that right now. The point of this video is because I received a comment on my $3,000 fine video for a CB operator refusing inspection. And it said, hey, they rarely mess with ham radio operators. So if, you if you're a CB guy, then go get your ham radio license and they'll never mess with you. And I'm like, I don't really think that's true. So I did some digging and it actually did not take long to find two different stories. And I'm gonna share one of them with you today. This is from 2019, so it was a couple years ago, but it's fairly recent, okay? A New York radio amateur, Harold Goretzky, K6DPZ of Richmond Hill, is facing a $17,000 fine imposed by the FCC. He was issued a notice of apparent liability for forfeiture, an NAL, on October 3rd, causing intentional interference on a local repeater and preventing other amateurs from using it. Quite frankly, I think that more people should, should get fined for this, okay? If you are a ham with a license and you interfere on a ham radio repeater, I think this would happen more often. That type of interference happens much more often than the FCC actually does something about it. If you have a ham radio license, then you should know better. So I'm talking to ham radio operators right now. If you're interfering with something, I think the FCC should come after you and fine you. Grow up. How old was this guy? I have no idea. I have no idea how old this dude was. Presumably, he was not 15 years old. And he, he was probably some old crotchety dude sitting in his apartment with nothing else to do. So he decided to interfere with the repeater because he didn't like the repeater owner. Or maybe somebody said something on the repeater that offended him at some point in time. Who knows why? Who knows why people do these stupid things? The FCC is quoted here saying, Given his history as a repeat offender, this violation warrants a significant penalty. NAL recounted numerous complaints alleging that Goretzky was deliberately interfering with a repeater in Glen Oaks, New York. In June of 2017, the FCC issued a warning letter to him, advising him of the nature of the allegations against him and directing him to stop using the repeater going forward completely. Nonetheless, additional complaints were filed. And I would be filing a complaint. Why not? This guy's a ham interfering with a ham radio repeater. Okay? And yes, yes, you can say, well... People getting on the ham radio repeaters without a license and interfering and maybe making noises or something or just, just being jack wagons. Yeah, you should complain about that as well, okay? And some of you are probably going to comment, well, that's just a sad ham. Who cares? Okay, if I bought the repeater and put it up and spent the money on the repeater itself, on the duplexers, on the hard line, on the antenna, on the internet connection if it has one, on the tower space if I have to rent it, and I want ham radio operators to use it for the benefit of expanded communications in this area, then I care. I care as the person who spent all the money. I care that somebody's coming on there and using it the way that it shouldn't be used. So, and quite frankly, if you are that person who spent your money on a repeater, you should care also. I don't understand why some people are like, well, just it's just a sad ham that does it. Why? I mean, what's wrong with you where you have to spend your days causing interference to something you don't own because you have nothing better to do with your time? Get, get, a, get a freaking hobby. Get a job, maybe. Maybe go get a job. Maybe you're bored because you have no job. In April of 2018, agents from the FCC New York Enforcement Bureau drove to Richmond Hill to investigate. Following an inspection of Gretzky's station, so presumably he let him in the door and let him inspect his station, the agents advised him in writing that he was prohibited from using the local repeater. Now, they didn't prohibit him from getting on the air or revoke his license. They just told him to stop using this one repeater. After the FCC re received further complaints regarding Gretzky's continued operation on the local repeater, the Enforcement Bureau again drove to Richmond Hill to investigate. The agent monitored the VHF repeater's input and output frequencies, and after observing deliberate interference to other stations, using direction-finding techniques to identify the source of the transmission as Gretzky's station. Quote, the agent monitored and recorded transmissions emanating from Gresty Station for several hours that afternoon and heard him interfering with the local repeater, the NAL said. Again, quote, later, the agent heard Gresky making threatening comments towards other amateur radio operators. These transmissions were deliberate to control the frequency and prevent other amateur radio operators from conducting legitimate communications. So what do you think about that? Okay, so some people will come along and they'll be like, well... FCC's stomping on his rights for fill in the blank. Make up something, okay? He's not stomping on his rights. He is the one interfering with other people. He is the one interfering with equipment that he does not own. He is the one interfering 
with regular transmissions on amateur radio frequencies and an amateur radio repeater and other amateur radio operators. So if you're the guy who's listening to all this and trying to communicate on this repeater and some other guy is causing interference, then your rights are being infringed at that person at that point in time. If you're trying to talk to me, then your rights and my rights are both being infringed at that point in time by this guy down the road who apparently has the maturity level of a junior high school student. If you want to learn how not to get fined by the FCC, I recommend that you head over to hamradioprep.com. Today's video is sponsored by hamradioprep.com, where you can always save a 20% discount off of all of their courses with the coupon code of Jason20. Now, you can take your smartphone today and download their app on Android or iOS and get started for free. The app itself is free. You can buy extended training material that costs money and you can save a 20% discount with the coupon code of Jason20 like I mentioned before and you can buy their materials on desktop as well and go from there. But if you want to get started for free today, download their app, hamradioprep.com and if you ever talk to them, trade emails, make a purchase from them, be sure to thank them for sponsoring this video. The following month, the FCC Regional Director David Dombrowski spoke with Gretzky via telephone. <laughs> noting that the commission will, it was still receiving complaints about his continued use of the repeater and cautioning him against using the repeater. The FCC said Goretzky apparently willfully violated Section 333 of the Communications Act, Section 97.101 Delta, of the FCC's amateur service rules demonstrating a deliberate disregard for the commission's authority and very spirit of amateur radio service by continuing to interfere with the local repeater despite having been warned. And that's where the article ends. I wish some of these articles, this is on the AWRL website, and I will link it below if you want to uh, read this for yourself. I wish some of the artic these articles would link to follow-ups. I mean, this was five years ago, almost uh, four and a half years ago. So I wish some of these would link to a follow-up and say, well, what happened to this guy? Did someone go over to his house and beat the crap out of him? <laughs> I mean, did the FCC actually collect any money? Did they confiscate his equipment? What happened? I don't really know. I did a video about someone else a while back. That story for that person, I'm, I'm trying to remember which one it was because I've done a few of these. That story for that person, that was a CB guy. And I, and I had people coming along in the comments say that they knew the guy and he had since passed away. I'm like, okay. So if anyone knows this guy, if anyone in New York has heard this guy or knows him or heard this interference back in 2019, put a comment below and let me know if you know what happened. What happened next? I would like to know. I would like to know what happened next. The real issue is this, okay? This guy was willfully interfering with a ham radio repeater on ham radio frequencies, and he was keeping other people from using it. So you can come along, once again, you can come along and say, well, the FCC just needs to, they have too much overreach, or they have too much authority, or they can't, they shouldn't be able to do this. Well, why not? What about everybody else that was trying to use the repeater or listen to the repeater in a legitimate type of way? What about their rights? What about the repeater owner's rights who's paid all this money for, or it's if it's a club repeater. If it's a club repeater, then even worse because people pay money to the club to use the club repeater. And now there's a multitude of people who can't use the repeater because of this interference. Okay, so while I, I don't necessarily, I don't like to defend the FCC, I think they have their place in moderation, okay, and I think it's important to understand that we the people are, the, the government is supposed to be, and the FCC is part of that government, so the FCC actually works for us, not the other way around. We shouldn't be beholden or, or liable for F, to the FCC. We shouldn't have to answer the FCC. The FCC should have to answer to us, but their job is to do stuff like what exactly what they did right here. They gave him a warning letter over the course of like a year and a half. Maybe longer than that. They gave him a warning letter. They issued a fine. They drove to his location and proved that it was him that was doing this. So there's no ambiguity. There's no question that it was this guy interfering. In this article, it doesn't talk about anything about him getting his equipment confiscated or taken away, which at that point in time, if you get your ham radio license and you memorize the test questions and you realize that you have to provide an inspection, if they come knock on your door, you have to let them inspect your equipment not let him in your house, not let him confiscate anything, but let him inspect your equipment. And if you continue acting like a jackass, then maybe you should get your equipment taken away. I would like to know what you guys think about that, looking at it from an outside perspective. Don't look at it like this guy's getting trampled on by the FCC. Look at it like everybody else surrounding this guy and how this guy is interfering with people who just want to be amateur radio operators and use the repeater the way it should be used. 
If you enjoyed this story, you want to see other like it, check out these videos over here because I've got a bunch of these. CB operators, ham radio operators, GMRS, a lot of stuff over here. Check that out. 73, thanks for watching today.